Pausing your recording can conserve space on your computer by making your file smaller. It can also be necessary if you're interrupted or need to take a break. The downside to pausing is that you may forget to unpause the recording and then carry on with what you were trying to record. This has happened to me more than I'd like to admit. It really stinks to have to re-record minutes or maybe even hours of footage, so today I'll share a technique I developed that makes it almost impossible to forget to unpause. Before I show you how to set it up, let's see how it works. I'll start a test recording, then I'll press a custom shortcut button on my stream deck, which will pause the recording and make all of my monitors turn to grayscale. With the monitors like this, I can easily see that something is not right. It would be really hard to accidentally continue with my recording. When I press the same button, I can toggle to the off state, which turns the monitors back to color and unpauses the recording. Unless you have lost hours of footage like I have, you might not be impressed by this. But hopefully this video will make it so you never have to experience that pain. Let's take a look at how to set it up. To do this, you will need a screen recording application that supports a pause recording shortcut, and a Stream Deck or a similar device or app that can run multiple actions at a time. And you'll need to configure your operating system to take advantage of Grayscale Preview Mode. Let's start in the recording app. I'm using XSplit Broadcaster, but you can also use OBS Studio, which is free and does basically the same thing. I have a video you can watch to learn more about screen recording with live streaming apps like this. I'll go to Tools, Settings, Hotkeys, and add a custom shortcut for pause recording. I'll choose Control alt shift p Try to avoid shortcuts that may trigger in any app you may be recording. The longer the shortcut, the less likely it will be taken by an app. If your recording app already has a pause shortcut, then just make a note of what it is. On to the next step. Let's enable Grayscale Preview on our computer. In Windows 10 and later, this is really easy. You just go to the color filters and set it to grayscale. Then make note of the shortcut Windows Control C. On Mac, it's a little more complicated. You'll need to manually add a shortcut to enable and disable Grayscale Preview. I'll link you to a guide for that in the video description. Next, go to the shortcut application you will use to trigger the command. In my case, I am using the Stream Deck, but you can also use something like Microsoft Power Automate, Auto Hotkey, or a similar app to run multi-action commands. Stream Deck can create multi-action switches, which is an on-off button that can run two different multi-actions. I'll use that, but this will also work as a single multi-action. First, I'll add a system hotkey, which is set to Control-Alt-Shift-P, which I defined as pause recording and XSplit. Second, I'll add another system hotkey, which is set to Windows Control-C, which enables Grayscale Preview. On Mac, this will be whichever shortcut you chose. It's important to pause before applying the color filter to ensure that you don't capture any grayscale frames. Next, I'll apply the same commands for the second multi-action state. I'll go to the button and customize it. I'll be sure to label each state accordingly. And I'll add unique colors so I can easily see which state is enabled on the Stream Deck. This is more of an aesthetic choice. You could just use a single multi-action to trigger this as well. As you can see, I have other buttons like Record that I can use. I can even switch between different cameras and scenes and trigger my smart lights. The Stream Deck makes it really convenient to record video, but that's something I explore in other tutorials. Now let's test the button to ensure it's working correctly. Start a recording, and then try the button. Your recording should pause, and then the screen should become grayscale. If it's not working correctly, you may want to add a small wait period between each command in case they are overlapping or conflicting with each other. Also ensure that your keyboard shortcuts aren't triggering anything in the apps you're going to be recording. If all is good, then you are set. You can now safely take breaks, cut out barking dogs and airplanes, and conserve space on your computer without risking losing footage. As a final step, you should back up your presentation and multi-action to save the settings in case you need to restore them later. Although this technique should work consistently, I'd still make sure to keep an eye on the recording state in your recording app. I'm still in the habit of pausing the recording using the button in the app, and if I do that, then the multi-action button reverses, and it will turn my screen grayscale when I'm recording. All right, I know you want to get to trying this out, so I won't keep you much longer. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to become a subscriber and a member if you're so inclined. Thanks for watching and stay creative.